Russia is talking about abandoning NASA on the International Space Station. Though the news shocked many and inspired a flurry of headlines, the threat is neither new nor particularly threatening like the time two years ago when the U.S. was completely dependent on Russia to get to the ISS. This is thanks to Elon Musk's SpaceX. In fact, the private company Rocket has completely destroyed Russia's best rocket. Welcome back to Alpha Tech. We'd like to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. Now grab a seat and we'll expose you to everything about today's topic in today's episode. Well, no one can deny that Russia is the cradle of the space rocket industry. They sent the first man and woman in space, performed the first lunar flyby using Luna 1, and launched a space flight with more than one crew member through Voshkod 1. Moreover, Russia really dominated the space industry when the U.S. space shuttle retired in 2011. The Soyuz served as the only means to ferry crew members to and from the International Space Station. Although China did launch crewed Shenzhou flights during this time, none of them docked with the ISS. However, the long-maintained dominance of Russian space tech is being overshadowed by Elon Musk. All the glory of Russia is now a thing of the past. SpaceX has changed the spaceflight landscape during its two decades of existence. The company, which Elon Musk founded in March 14 of 2002, has made rocket reuse routine, a breakthrough that allows for cheaper and more frequent launches. SpaceX has launched more than 150 orbital missions over the company's first 20 years with its best workhorse, Falcon 9. Importantly, thanks to SpaceX's Dragon, the U.S. is once again able to send astronauts to orbit from American soil. The company's also kicked off a new phase of space tourism and potentially brought the settlement of Mars a step closer to reality, among other accomplishments. Anyway, to make the story more objective, let's dive into each aspect. First, the most important factor, safety. According to Wikipedia, amid its long run, the Soyuz U rocket had a streak of 112 consecutive launches from July 1990 to May 1996. However, this period includes the Cosmos 2243 launch in April 93. This mission should more properly be classified as a failure. According to noted space scientist Jonathan McDowell, the control system of the rocket failed during the final phase of the Block 1 burn, and the payload was auto-destructed. Taking this failure into account, the Soyuz U had a run of 100 successful launches from 1983 to 1996. As of March of this year only, SpaceX has completed a record-setting run of 111 successful Falcon 9 missions in a row. So the Falcon 9 has now exceeded both the Soyuz U and Delta II rockets for consecutive mission successes, and apparently its low flight insurance cost reflects this. What seems remarkable about all of this is that the Falcon 9 amassed this safety record at the very same time SpaceX was experimenting with demonstrating reuse. That would seem to be a fairly powerful argument in favor of the safety of reusable launches. Next, price. As the Soyuz is an expendable rocket, the four engines fall back to Earth when their fuel is spent, and the main core, not reusable either. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 rocket is already partially reusable. The first stage engine lands itself back on Earth. The Soyuz rocket gets used once, and all the bits that fall back to Earth are lost forever, usually in the ocean somewhere. It's an awfully expensive business. In fact, the Russian space agency Roscosmos isn't known for being transparent about cost, but it charges America and Europe's space agency, NASA and ESA, $80 million per seat, so it's got to cost a lot to fly Soyuz. By comparison, the Falcon 9 is $62 million per launch and its larger sibling, the Falcon Heavy, about $90 million tops. SpaceX has a radically historically low price per seat to space. A seat on the giant Starship system is estimated to be even cheaper despite its bigger size. At the same time, the maximum payload to low Earth orbit for communication satellites and the ISS is also a weakness of Soyuz, because Falcon 9 can lift payloads of up to 22,800 kilograms to low Earth, and Soyuz 2, only 8,600 kilograms. In addition, the Falcon 9 is arguably far, far more advanced than Soyuz. It can land itself, and this is an instant one-up on Soyuz. The landing isn't done by a pilot back at SpaceX headquarters. A computer does everything from the time that Falcon 9 assumes control of the countdown right up to the landing. A lot of the Soyuz is indeed automated, 
but not to the level that Falcon 9 and Dragon are. Furthermore, let's share the actual experience of the astronauts with these two rockets. The most experienced astronaut on SpaceX's launched first crew shared that riding a Dragon capsule to orbit is like being inside the actual mythical beast, and a lot more fun than NASA's shuttles or Russian flights. Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi, who became only the third person to launch aboard three kinds of spacecraft, said, The SpaceX Dragon is the best. Short answer, he said. Comparing the experience to riding NASA's space shuttles and Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, the Dragon, quote, really wanted to go to space, he added. These highlights are more than enough to make the Soyuz obsolete and far behind the SpaceX rockets. But something even worse is about to happen with Russia's finest rockets. This is related to a seemingly rash decision by Rogozin, which narrowed Soyuz's future and paves the way for the SpaceX Falcon 9. In response to EU sanctions against Russian enterprises, Roscosmos is suspending cooperation with European partners in organizing space launches from the Kourou Cosmodrome. At that point, Rogozin announced, by the end of the year, dozens of private Russian spacecraft for communication, meteorological observation, and remote sensing of the Earth will be sent to orbit. For this, Soyuz 2 carrier rockets, which we have derived from the launch project of the British OneWeb satellite system, will be used. Soyuz flew 21 missions last year. 11 were Russian government payloads. Nearly all the rest of Soyuz's payloads came from abroad, including a Soyuz commercial rideshare mission carrying 38 satellites from 18 countries. Unfortunately, there are few private Russian space companies to take Rogozin up on the offer. Daria Aerospace, the first Russian space startup, is no longer in business, and that only leaves a handful of Moscow-based startups like Orbital Express, Avant Space, and Sputnik. But Quality Analytics senior analyst Caleb Henry said, there does not appear to be anything remotely close enough commercial Russian demand to fill six Soyuz rockets anytime soon, even at rock bottom price. Anatoly Zak of RussianSpaceWeb.com agreed, I am not aware of any private company in Russia that has launched anything substantial up to this point, he said by email. Soyuz will certainly have idle, useless years and gradually no one will remember their name. Instead, this is absolutely the time for SpaceX to reach out around the world and create its influence, replacing the best Russian rocket. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section because everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.